Welcome everybody, welcome to a video on Euclid's fifth postulate. <clears throat> For many years they have never understood what Euclid's fifth postulate was referring to. It hasn't been understood for many years until some characters here decided there's more to it. They didn't appreciate the fact it was all to do with the hemisphere. Well, they couldn't figure it out using a hemisphere. So this is where they decided to create non-Euclidean geometry. So Euclid's fifth postulate is all about Euclidean geometry and it's all to do with the hemisphere. From a flat surface of Earth and the arc of its dome, mainly for celestial navigation. It was all known that Earth was flat. It wasn't a sphere, so if you understand how the Earth works, and it was flat and it is flat, you understand quite easily what the fifth postulate is referring to. It took me probably only two minutes. So, go figure. It's where Occam's razor comes into it. But then I sometimes refer to these people who think they live on a spinning ball globe. They use Occam's razor with some Dunning-Kruger and think themselves, think themselves geniuses. But no, they obviously couldn't figure it out, they couldn't think, so what, they've gone off on a tangent and created this non-Euclidean geometry. So, after watching this video, go watch a video on YouTube, very interesting, on non-Euclidean geometry, and what they start doing, slicing the ball, in a way that I'm doing here with the, semi hemis with the hemisphere. But with the way they slice the ball is the way they now have converted the celestial navigation using a, a sphere. And all these globe-loving people think you can only s navigate celestially knowing that you've got a sphere or with a sphere. But it was all known as a flat earth and man's arc of horizon. This is what he's viewing. He is always at zenith at this point here. So check out this movie, uh, video, Non-Euclidean Geometry dash Math History dash vertical line, capital M, capital J, Wild Burger. Go and find out, watch what he's doing on that video. I'm going to go over it. Now his fourth postulates lead into this. All roads lead to the fifth postulate. It's about opening the mind and knowing reality from fiction. Fiction you're all taught today basically. So the first postulate is a straight line may be drawn from any one point to another point. So we all start off with zenith. Man is zenith to his arc of horizon. That's where he views, how he views the whole sky around him. A dome. 180 degrees, 360 degrees all around him. That's his horizon. So from point to point, any point to another point, one point to this point. Second postulate. A terminated line can be produced indefinitely. In other words, this point here can swing around and be equal anywhere around this hemisphere, which is the declination up from the horizon as an even point around a hemisphere or a dome. And this is what leads us into the fifth postulate. Third postulate. A circle can be drawn with any centre and any radius. So we take the flat earth as a whole, there's the centre and it's a radius, but man within the, with the Earth system has his own arc of horizon. He can be anywhere on the Earth. This is his viewing dome. Everything will be plastered 
within within reason within his location on earth on his dome all the stars will be shown up on his dome man's arc of horizon this is described in ancient Egyptian literature that's where I get the term from arc of horizon so any circle there's a circle and there's a circle and this also relates to um, who was it circle within a circle Enoch circles within circle that's one aspect of it but there's also another one but we won't go into that the circle can be drawn with any circle and any radius so there you go fourth postulate all right angles are equal to one another so we have to start with this system here flat earth system and man's arc of horizon because that's the way it is that's reality man stands at this point here always center of his arc of horizon when he's navigating with stars he takes readings from the star takes this angle finds out what it is whatever makes up 90 degrees gives his position then he calculates this remainder this balance here uh, in arc minutes times it by 69 nautical miles gives him a distance to the GP of this star there it gives him a distance to that star so let's say you're back there he, he will now have a circle from where he is actually he will have a circle the GP point of that star so he's somewhere on the circle but we're not getting into system navigation right at the minute this is about Euclid's fifth postulate so all roads lead to the fifth postulate now what is the fifth postulate <clears throat> I'll read it out that if a straight line falling on two straight lines so there we have two straight lines one well actually there is a straight line then we take another straight line from man's 90 degrees that's where man is always standing two straight lines if a straight line falling on two straight lines in fact take another straight line now we take this falling on these two lines Actually, use another colour. So it's there. If a straight line falling on two straight lines makes the interior angles of the same side less than two right angles, of the same side less than two right angles there and there they are both less than two right angles it has nothing to do with 180 degrees this is common man getting carried away it's not written there is it no so we work out these two angles here right what have we got we have Seventy six, roughly seventy six degrees. So it says seventy six degrees, and this one here is fifty five, fifty six. Let's say fifty six, fifty six degrees on the same side okay so we go 56 and 76 equals 13 132 degrees so 
Let's say it again, that if a straight line falling on two straight lines makes the interior angles on the same side less than two right angles, they're both less than two right angles, the two straight lines, if produced indefinitely, these two here, produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which are the angles less than the two right angles. It's going to swing around on the same side. So let's do this, 100, 132 degrees. So 132 degrees from this side, because it's drawn on the side, comes to 132 degrees. 132 degrees. And draw the line there. If produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which are the angles less than the two right angles. So it's met on this side. So they've taken this triangle here and swung it round. Equal. So this is now equal to this. That's all it is, folks. Declination up from the horizon is an even point around a hemisphere or a dome. Taken that and swung it around. These two measurements, these two angles here, create this and matches this. That's the postulate. That these two angles will equal this, this here. That's all it is. It's that simple. These guys couldn't figure it out. Maybe they did. Maybe they were the ones that were paid to con the people, turn it into a sphere, turn the earth into a sphere. This is all about celestial navigation. This is the world first. This guy here must be some sort of a genius or something. So, if you want to learn celestial navigation, go watch a few videos, but open your mind and revert it back to the hemisphere. Don't, take, don't, ta don't start taking slices through a circle and bringing it back to the centre of the circle. No, there's the arc, and you as man, is 90 degrees to his zenith. You're always there observing everything around you. Okay, all there folks. This here equals one, sorry, it will be there, 132 degrees on the side of the two less than right angles. You try and explain this to common men I call them common, but I, what else am I going to call them? Most of the time they're very ignorant, they won't listen to a word I'm saying. Immediately they start using, bringing up 180 degrees. No, there's no mention of 180 degrees. They are both less than 90 degrees. It doesn't say one has to be, and they both equal less than 180 degrees. That's pure garbage. That's just stupidity by some people. This is what it is. That's all. Thanks for watching.